interesting summer, quite intriguing, um, not so many ins, quite a few outs, we're going to go through them all, as well as play the first Premier League game of the season against Southampton, but yeah, it's been quite an intriguing window, um, I've had to let quite a few players go, and I've, this summer transfer window has basically just been sort of revolved around squad rules and all that kind of good stuff, I've had to just trying to think of the word. I can't think of the word. I've had to... I can't think of the word. What's that word when you have to? Adhere. Yeah, I had to adhere to the squad rules. That's the word that I've been looking for. And it's not easy. Um, trying to add to a squad that's already won the Premier League is quite hard. And trying to stick to the squad rules whilst doing that as well is really difficult. So, um, yeah, this is basically what has happened this summer. Um, so we're going to start with the ins. Our first signing is Wilfred and Didi from Leicester City. And as you could already see, I've spent quite a lot of money on him. I think it was 58 million to be precise. Yeah, 58 million, which is quite a lot of money for somebody who's probably not world class. But as I mentioned in my um, previous video, um, I needed an out and out defensive midfielder. Fabinho had done a very good job, but I needed an anchor in that midfield, I needed someone that, somebody that was going to sit in front of the back four at all times, and Ndidi is that man, Ndidi is, because yeah, that won't, that's not old at all, um, but let's look at his stats, we're starting on the technical side, obviously marsing, mar marsing, marking, passing and tackling are the main attributes, tackling of 16, passing could be a tiny bit better, but I'm not going to complain that it's 12, marking 13, as well mentally his anticipation is fantastic which is obviously vitally important for a defensive midfielder composure concentration makes fairly good decisions as well work great is 17 so he's going to get himself about the pitch make himself busy positioning teamwork and vision all decent as well physically um, on the whole very good obviously he's got a lot of stamina fairly strong he's got a bit of pace about him as well i mean indeed he is by no means the finished article he can be better he is 22 years old, we've got time to refine him, but I feel that he is a very, very astute signing in a position that we really, really needed to fill. So indeed, he was my first summer signing. My second summer signing was Miguel Lyon from Villarreal, I believe. Uh, he cost £8 million for Villarreal, and this guy is purely a backup to Alexander-Arnold, um, you'll recall. In the January window, I sold Nathaniel Klein and I was basically relying on um, Alexander Arnold and Gomez staying fit for the entire season, which thankfully they did. Um, but it was obvious that I needed a backup right back just in case something happened to Alexander Arnold. Lyon has come in, he's very experienced, he's you know, he's not a bad player, you know, his technicals are very good. Crossing stands out, um, tackling, like, tackling could be a bit better, technique and passing all good mentally very consistent across the board as well physically still fairly good for a 31 year old um, he has been about a bit especially over the last few years played for Watford, Porto, Sevilla obviously played in Mexico um, for quite a few years before making the move over to Europe so he's a very experienced player and as backups go you know looks pretty dependable so I'm happy with that he's obviously not going to get a lot of game time but if he needs to get game time um, I'm going to trust him to, to do a decent job. Stefan Radu was the next man through the door. Now, if you are subscribed to my main channel and you've watched my Watford series, you'll know that I've already got quite a soft spot for this guy. Uh, he's one of the standout players in my Watford series. And this guy, again, I bought him in purely as a backup. Andy Robertson is obviously always going to be the first choice. And as you'll see in a minute, Moreno has finally moved on. Um, so yeah, this, this guy's basically just going to fill in for like cup games and stuff and when Robertson's not quite um, fit. Um, technically, a um, little bit in and out, but marking, tackling and passing still very good. Heading as well, even if, I mean, he can fill in at centre-back as well if need be, although he's not brilliant there. Um, crossing is fairly good as well. Mentally, he's got some fantastic mental attributes. Anticipation of 17, um, he's aggressive. And whether he can channel that, well, I don't know. Bravery of 16, composure. Um, he's a leader as well, which is going to be vitally important. Positioning, teamwork, work great. He's got tremendous mental attributes physically, as you would expect. A little bit on the wane, but still all fairly good. Strength of 14, natural fitness of 17. Yeah, like you say, pay. 
pace and stamina declining, but you know, he's 32 years old, you know, you can't really expect that to be much higher. Uh, he's been at Lazio for a number of years. Um, I don't, obviously, I don't really know how he's done, but last year he got a 7.33 average rating, so he did fairly well last season. So I'm pretty happy with that. You know, obviously, he's going to be nothing more than a backup, so a similar situation to my own, but yeah, I don't think he could really get much better that, than that for the price that we got him for. So our final signing of the summer was Jamal Lascelles. Now, this might be a little bit of a panic buy. I'm not too sure yet. Obviously, Lascelles has got quality. Um, but this was a signing that I bought in purely to adhere to the squad rules. Like I said, um, I needed to fill the quota and I didn't have enough players to actually get that done. Um, and combining that with the positions I needed was quite difficult. And I felt that I needed a fourth centre-back because obviously Van Dijk, Manolas and Gomez are all top quality. But if we get like one or two injuries, we need somebody decent that's going to come in. And Jamal Sells, I think, is that man. Um, heading, marking, tackling, all excellent. 16, 15 and 16. Um, mentally, um, he's a leader. I mean, you've seen that at Newcastle. He's a fantastic leader. Um, positioning, teamwork and work great. All very good as well. Brave. Anticipation of 14. Composure. Maybe we can refine that a little bit. I don't know. Concentration and decision making. They're still decent attributes. And then he's physically excellent. Natural fitness, strength, pace, stamina. He's got quite a bit to his game. So maybe he's worth a little bit more than a two and a half star um, ability. I don't really know. Um, we bought him for 32 million, which is quite a lot. So obviously it's a gamble. Like I say, it, it, it's kind of in panic by territory because it was on transfer deadline day. And as you'll see, I, I, I just sold Pepe at that point. Um, because, you know, like squad rules and stuff like that, the joys of squad rules. But 32 million is a bit of a pun. But I think, again, could be a very decent option for us. Okay, so let's move on to the outs then. Dominic Slanky has finally gone. I just didn't have a place for him at all in the squad and I you know I, I just didn't see anywhere for him to, to progress and get game time. Obviously had that loan spell at Rangers last season, seven goals and fourteen appearances. He's gone there for twelve and a half million. Hopefully, you know, he'll get some game time and we have actually got a buyback installed and he's eighteen million um buyback clause. So, you know, if he does turn out to be pretty decent, we can get in there first and get him back. Um, ben Woodburn has gone on loan to Newcastle, obviously a, a decent prospect. Um, he was on loan at Sheffield United in the Championship last season. Did pretty well, 11 goals in 36 games, 7.06. So obviously this is time to test himself in the Premier League and hopefully he does well with it. Harry Wilson has also gone out on loan. He's gone to Aston Villa who have just been promoted to the Premier League. This is another player that I want to see play Premier League football see how he does in this division was on loan of Derby last season he scored 9 goals and set up 6 in 38 games, got 6.99 average rating, so he did fairly well for him, so it's just another test to see um, how he gets on in the Premier League, obviously fairly decent in the Championship, so yeah, just like, like Woodburn it's just a bit of a tester for him but now this is very interesting Alberto Moreno has gone to Real Madrid for 40 six million pounds Real Madrid willingly paid 46 million pounds for Moreno I mean he's a, he's a decent player in the game he's, he's a pretty good player in the game but obviously he was never going to get in front of Robertson for me uh, he played 13 games for his last season I mean to be fair he actually did fairly well when he came in but 46 million for him I was going to take that all day long I mean, he is a good player in the game. I think I've given him some an unnecessary stick in the FM world. Obviously, in real life, it's it's pretty much a different story. But yeah, forty six million, forty six million for Alberto Moreno. I was taking it all day long, and I think with Radu as a backup, I actually think we've done a lot better. And it's not, it's kind of not really fair to to hold him back. Um, if he wants first team football, I mean, he's probably, I can't imagine him getting in front of Marcelo at Real Madrid. I'm assuming Marcelo is still at Real Madrid. Uh, let's have a look. Is Marcelo, yeah, Marcelo, I mean, he's injured at the moment. He's going to be out for two to five weeks, so he might get a few.
few games here and there. But yeah, 46 million for Moreno. I was taking that every single day of the week. Um, Connor Randall's gone on the free to New England. I mean, he's just pretty rubbish. He had a loan spell at Rochdale last year. He did all right, but, you know, he was just never really going to be any good. Um, a few players have gone out on loan. Um, James Milner has left um, for Leicester, £8 million. Pounds. I, I just thought that it wasn't really fair. Um, to not give him game time because James Milner, obviously a player that should be playing games and I only gave him 16 appearances last season and I just thought it was the right thing to move him on as dependable and as versatile as he is. I just wasn't going to give him regular game time so it was only really fair that I let him go. He's 33 years old, he's getting on a bit now so I just thought it was the decent thing to let him go. Obviously he's a massive kind of influence in the dressing room but I feel I feel that we've got the quality to, to make up for that so he's gone to Leicester hopefully he'll get some game time um, Ajari has gone out on loan to Middlesbrough he was at Rangers last season I believe did fairly okay for them he's probably in last chance salute now 21 years old within the next couple of years he should be making inroads towards the first team so I'll monitor him and see how we go. Um, Pepe, I've mentioned briefly, um, he was the last outgoing. He's gone to Sporting. He made only, I think it was three appearances for us. 0.5 million. Didn't really use him. And with the squad rules and whatnot, I would have had to have left him out of the squad anyway because um, I had to make way for English homegrown players. So Pepe would have been out of the squad anyway for the Premier League. So there's no point keeping him. And it gave me a a tiny bit in, in funding to try and nail Jamal Lascelles, not like that, try and buy him, um, which I did, obviously, on transfer deadline day, so there we go, that's our, uh, our transfers for this window, let me know what you think, uh, might be, there might be a little bit of contentiousness here and there, I mean, it's not the most perfect transfer window in terms of incomings, but we can only work with what we got, and when you've already won the title, it's kind of hard to improve on that. So I think I've done fairly well with the budget that I had. So yeah, I can't really grumble at that. But anyway, um, it's time to turn our attention towards the first game. Actually, before we do that, let's take you through the pre-season. Now, pre-season was quite good. Uh, we started off with a 10-0 win against Tranmere, in which I played my first... I mean, I don't manage these games. I let my assistant do it because I can't be bothered. Um, but I basically just tell him to pick the first 11, and we beat them 10-0. Um, Salah got four, Mane got one, Firmino got four, Keita got one. Then we played Jiangsu, beat them 5 0, and DD, Firmino with a hat trick and an own goal from Ang. And we beat Lyo, I'm going to go with Lyo Ning, it's probably wrong, or Liao Ning. Um, Sadio Mane with two, Firmino with two, Fabinho and Manalas. A 2 0 win over Fuli, Fabinho and Alexander Arnold. And then we beat Tottenham in the Community Shield, so we got a, we got a little trophy. Um, to show already this season, Marnie and Firmino with the goals. Christian Eriksen scored for them before Harry Kane was sent off, which helped us quite a little bit. So if we just look at the um, the expectations in the competition, so we are actually, you know, we're second favourites again. Also, the media aren't really trusting us to retain it this season. Um, who does Kula Bartley play for now? Is that Man United? Fair enough. So we've got, we've got Van Dijk in there got three players in the Dream 11, so I, I thought we deserve a little bit more than that. To be honest, let's look at the competition reviews, we're expected to win the Premier League, which is, you know, fair enough, considering that we are the defending champions, we're expected to reach the quarterfinals, they've actually lowered that expectation, obviously last year it was semi-finals, couldn't quite do it, reached the final of the FA Cup, League Cup again, not important, it's not important, but we won it anyway. So yeah, those are our expectations for this season. But I think it's about time that we got into some actual football. So let's go ahead to the Southampton game and look at the team. Okay, here we go then. This is the team for the game against Southampton. As you can see, we have changed the formation up. We are going for a 4-3-3 formation as opposed to the 4-2-3-1 that we played last season. I think this system basically suits the newer signings more and the squad that we've got now. Um, so this is the team that we've got. So we've got Alisson in goal. We've got a back four of Alexander-Arnold, Van Dijk, Manlas, Manalas.
that's fucking actually say his name and Robertson we've got Ndidi as the defensive midfielder and Fabinho and Keita um, in front Fabinho still in the side he had a very good season last season and I'm looking to see what he can do this time around Salah on the right Mane on the left and then Firmino on his own up front Simeone is the backup striker and look who we've got back it's like a it's basically like a new signing Alex Oxlade Chamberlain finally fit after missing the entire season with was it a cruciate ligament injury that he got so yeah Alex Oxlade Chamberlain is basically going to be like a new signing he's on the bench today and I'm hoping to give him some game time at some point we'll see um, what the situation is and all that kind of stuff but without any further ado let's get into the game obviously new season new system Southampton we'll have a look at them in a second I haven't really scouted them as much as I probably should have done so we'll take a look at them now so they're going with a 4-2-3-1 formation pretty much the same team they've got Emil Smith Rowe now um, Elliot Nussi as well do they have Elliot Nussi anyway I don't know um, Danny Ings obviously who has just joined them from Liverpool of course or auto instruct like we normally do and I think we will passionate or should I be aggressive no it'll be passionate and we'll say um, we should be winning this fun nah let's give the fans a performance that probably didn't go down well as well as it should have done try and do the old player team talk there's a lot more to come from you I believe I mean that didn't really work either so um, here we go into the new season obviously this game is going to give me chance to see how we work with the 4-3-3 um, hoping it will help us out in midfield and uh, see how Firmino operates as a lone striker because obviously yeah we all know he can do it but I didn't really give him much of an opportunity to do it last season or is that I always had someone behind him so um, obviously we haven't got William Jose anymore Robertson with a brilliant ball and Mohamed Salah scores the first goal of the season but what about that ball from Andy Robertson that was one hell of a cross see that again so Robertson intercepts it and then just whips one hell of a ball in towards Salah who's completely got rid of the left back I think that's Ryan Bertrand and there we go we get our first goal of the season there's a highlight straight from the kickoff is that going to be for us or for them there we got the ball again it's Robertson into Keita, finds Mane, Sadio Mane into Firmino, is the post and that's offside. Right, Robertson with the throw into Firmino, now it's Sadio Mane on the edge of the box, whips it in, Fabinho 2-0. Awesome finish from Fabinho, obviously he's playing a little bit higher this season, giving him more license to get forward even though he's still pretty much in the same role. Fabinho makes it 2-0. After 27 minutes, it all starts from Robertson's throw. Throwings look so weird on FM, they really do. Mane whips it in, who clears it away. Only out to Fabinho, who just wallops it past the goalkeeper. And we have a commanding position here. This is an awesome start to the season. Half time then, and couldn't really have gone much better. 2 0 in front, complete control. Southampton haven't threatened at all. Very pleased with the performance. Let's keep it going and let's try and see if we can rack up the score because you know you don't know how important goal difference is going to be come the end of the season we've got to take advantage of situations like this and I, th I think if that's one area that we want to improve it's being clinical because I think there are so many games last season where we dominated but didn't put our chances away and I think if there's one area that we need to improve on I think it's just that clinicality I keep using that word even though I don't think it's an actual word Firmino back to Fabinho here's Ndidi looks for Alexander-Arnold Cater patient build up Alexander-Arnold makes his way in and it's a poor shot straight from McCarthy and Didi's on a yellow card now which is starting to worry me I can always bring Henderson on if need be Smith throw into Lamina now it's Ward Prowse and Cater dispossesses Gives it into Salah. Salah near the edge of the Southampton box. Swings it back in. Firmino could have made it three. It was a decent chance. I don't think I'm going to take the risk. I think I will bring Henderson on now for Ndidi. And we'll play him as a kind of... We'll play him as a deep line playmaker on defend. And then I know we've got two deep line playmakers. Unless I play... Um, thingy, forgotten his name. Firmino somewhere else. 
defensive mid join there. That's not which play him as a defensive mid, see if he can do the job. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reintroduce Alex Oxley Chamberlain. And he's going to come on for Sadio Mane. He's not the best out wide, I know he's a lot better through the middle generally. But I want to give him some game time. He's had a long, horrific spell out with obviously that injury. So it'd be nice to see him back on the pitch again. Hopefully we're not going to throw this away. McCarthy's thrown it away though. Straight to Salah. Firmino just wide. 15 minutes to go. We still haven't extended our advantage, which I was hoping we would. But, you know, we've been well on top in this game. Right, I am going to make sub number three. And it's just whoever I want to bring off really. Looks like it's going to be Cater. Because he's on the yellow card. And I don't think there's anything that we really need to change. Try and slow the tempo down a little bit because obviously, you know, we're in front, there's no real point in overdoing it when there's two minutes to go. Right, there we go, then just a few seconds to go, and we are going to get a comfortable 2 0 win on the opening day of the season. We got it wrapped up in the first half, really. It was up to Southampton to come out in the second half, and they didn't, so I'm pleased with the result. And the performance also got some game time from Slay Chamberlain which is good for him as well. And there we go, we're not top of the table, but, you know, it doesn't really matter because, you know, just to get those three points on the board, you don't want an embarrassment on the first day of the season. Fabinho is on form. We will praise him. Superb and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so quick look at the Premier League table. And it's quite interesting to note that every game has ended in a two-goal deficit, which is quite intriguing but there you go there's a pattern for you but obviously first win of the season clean sheet as well can't really ask for any more i don't know why the game keeps telling me to go to the social feed imagine thinking there are better players out there than fabinho should have scored more than that i mean yeah i mean bob i kind of agree with him there he fell asleep but the person next to him fell asleep okay so uh there we go that's what the fans think but I think that is where we're going to round this episode off. We've done quite a lot. I was hoping there was going to be more to that sentence than we've done quite a lot. But the words just haven't arrived. Um, but there we go. Those are the transfers. That's the first game of the season. I hope you enjoyed it. I think we will come back for the first Champions League group game. Because it nicely couples on to Manchester City at home. So that'll be fun. So we'll come back for that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you think of the transfers and all that kind of stuff but that is going to be everything for this episode so thank you very much for watching please leave a like on there if you enjoyed it subscribe if you are new to the channel comment below any thoughts and suggestions you may have if you'd like to check me out on social media and check out my other channels the links to those will be in the description below but thank you once again and i will see you in the next one bye for now